The day was her mother's memorial service, and everyone was in mourning. But the man was so excited that he almost sang a rap. He even danced around like a happy child. Just a few minutes ago, Randall was still mourning the death of his mother. He didn't know what he was going to do next and felt his life had lost its meaning. That's when his eldest daughter brought him the good news. She told him that she was pregnant and that it was a boy. That news was like a booster, bringing tears to the eyes of Randall, whose family was full of girls. Death and birth have always been the sides of the same coin. While Randall still didn't know if he should laugh or cry, his siblings came to him. They felt like confused and lost children when their mother passed. Kate said they have to keep doing what their mother would want them to do. As time goes on, she plans to build a music school for visually impaired children. And Kevin decided to start a charity business and then to spend more time with his family. Randall, however, is more ambitious. He's running for president in Iowa. That's what his mom wanted him to do before she died. Three kids who are now over 50 years old, sitting in front of the cabin talking about their past and their future. And that's when Kate brought up a concern they all shared. After mom died, they might get busier with their own lives, eventually drifting apart and not being as close as they are now. Randall said that if he were to close his eyes right now and imagine his family, the first thing he would think of would still be dad, mom and his siblings. So they did what they did when they were kids and repeated the classic line they promised each other that no matter where they go in the future, the three little ones would never be apart. At that moment, Randall remembered the second before his mother stopped breathing. She suddenly grabbed his hand very hard. He still can't figure out what that means. Maybe he'll understand when it reaches the end of his life. In truth, it was because in another time and place where she was dying, their mother finally saw their long dead father. She greeted him as she usually did and held his hand tightly. Jet told Rebecca to get ready. He was going to take her back to some small moments she might have forgotten. The first stop was an ordinary Saturday morning. Randall's Olympiad had been cancelled, so the family was left to stay home and be bored. Kevin and Randall, especially, both looked bored out of their minds. Kay was the only one who was excited to propose ideas to the group. They went out to the yard to play for square, just as she suggested. Kate was having a great time, but the two boys thought the game was stupid. Soon it started to rain. Kate looked a little sullen. She just likes to play with her family, but she was always the one who slowed down the game. Jack reassures her that it's okay, and now he was eager to slow things down. Then the family started watching old family videos. That's what Kate wanted to see. Looking at the video of the three little ones, Rebecca couldn't stop exclaiming how cute they were. However, Kevin and Randall still looked disgusted. The two adolescent boys were clearly preoccupied, so Rebecca and Jack decided to divide and conquer. It turns out that when Kevin was playing sports at school today, he was teased by his classmates for not being able to do pull-ups. Rebecca reassured him that it was okay, because it's impossible to do everything easily. Only success through hard work is precious. Little did little Kevin know at that moment, he would experience many more failures and setbacks in his future life. His mother's words today would become his motto. Jack found Randall in the bathroom. It turned out that the Olympiad had not been cancelled today, but his classmates had made fun of him for growing the beginnings of a mustache. He got angry and they confronted each other. And so his teacher banned him from Math Olympiad for a week as a punishment. For this reason, he felt very sorry for himself and realized his mistake. Jack knew that Randall was always smart and strong. He couldn't be. He could still help with the matter of the beard. With Jack's help, Randall began to learn to shave himself. That's when Kevin came in. Kevin joined in the shaving, as if that would prove he had grown up. As they shaved, they laughed at Kate for being a child, always playing those childish games. Jack, however, said that Kate was the one who really understood life. When you are young, you always want to grow up quickly. But when you grow up, ew, and spend the rest of your life looking back on the past. Cherish these times. Don't wait until you lose them to miss them. Jack is like a time-traveling prophet, trying to teach his sons to cherish the time they had. He wished time could go slower and slower. Then the family continued to play pin the tail on the donkey, which had become a regular activity for them every weekend. Back in another time, Rebecca, who was dying, seemed more anxious. And then, Jack took her to the next stop on the memory lane. The children had just turned one year old, and Rebecca mourned the loss of her third child more and more. It was like a thorn in her side that she couldn't pull out. So they went back to the old doctor who had helped with the birth. His lemon theory a year earlier had been a great help to them. The old doctor recalled that when his wife was pregnant, he always sang to the unborn child. But it wasn't long before they lost the baby. For a month after that, he and his wife were in a constant state of grief. Listening to that song over and over again was a way for him to punish and hurt himself. But then one day his wife got pregnant again. He was surprised to find that he still sang the same song to her pregnant belly. 
25 years later at his daughter's wedding. He danced with her again to that song. Life is like that. There, learn to let them live in harmony. No matter which side is winning, you have to be able to bear it all and have the courage to move forward. That's the perfect ending. After Rebecca's death, the family still gathered together to play pin the tail on the donkey. It's not just a game. It is the Pearson family's unchanging legacy. As long as our love for them remains in our hearts, the departed will always be with us. The last stop Jack took Rebecca to review was the bar where they first met. Jack almost took another path that night, when he looked up and saw Rebecca on stage, and then they became husband and wife, creating innumerable miracles in their lives. It was a mysterious night. Two strangers were taken to the hospital. One was an 11-year-old boy, whose life was in danger from a car accident. The other a middle-aged man, who had inhaled smoke from a house fire. And suddenly, the wheel of fate starts to spin. What unbelievable story will happen between them? The boy had lost blood flow to his leg. Due to the complexity of his injuries, he had to wait for a consultation with a trauma doctor. The family waited anxiously outside the emergency room. The brother blamed himself for playing with his brother in the car. Eventually, he had undone his seat belt, which had had serious consequences. The father tried his best to calm his son and the rest of the family. But how could he not feel terrified too? To have enough energy for the long night ahead, he decided to grab a few cups of coffee to cool off. In the break room, he ran into Jack, who had been injured in the fire. Jack could see that he was in a dark mood, so he talked to him in a light-hearted manner. He said that that evening, his house had burst into flames and burned down. Fortunately, his family escaped, and he was only slightly injured. He believed that no matter what happens, they will get through it. But those words didn't comfort the man, because his son Max is still in the operating room and is not out of danger. After learning of his son's condition, Jack expressed his empathy. In the same hospital, his wife lost her third child in childbirth 18 years ago, just when Jack was about to fall into the abyss of despair. The old doctor who delivered the baby said something very philosophical to him. If you can take a life as sour as a lemon and make it as sweet as a lemonade, even the darkest moments of life can be transformed into unexpected happiness. At that moment, the boy's heart rate suddenly started dropping. At the same time as the boy was being resuscitated, Dr. Spencer was giving Jack medicine and warning him about help to use it. Upon receiving the news about his son, the father rushed to the operating room. Max had been diagnosed as having a fat embolism. He needed anticoagulant therapy urgently. Instead, Dr. Spencer recommended continuing CPR to prevent possible hemorrhaging. Somewhere else, Jack's wife Rebecca decided to go get something to eat. Leaving him alone in the hospital room, with the medical staff working hard to save him, Max finally regained his pulse and was brought back from the brink of death. Just Dr. Spencer was finally feeling relieved. He received an emergency call. He was asked to rush to the ward downstairs. But by the time he arrived, it was too late. There is nothing that makes a doctor more helpless than this. The story of life. They can only treat it as a normal part of life and tell the family as calmly as possible. Rebecca never would have imagined. She had only bought a chocolate and missed her last moments with her husband. And so, the sadness and joy of the hospital continued to unfold. Some people lost their lives. Others got another chance. Two strangers who had never met before crossed paths while dying and going in different directions. But the little boy Max would never know that their encounter would deepen in the decades to come and even have a significant impact on human society. When he grew up, Max became a medical doctor. The car accident that left him disabled years earlier inspired him to continue saving lives. However, his research into cancer drugs failed repeatedly and he was told by his superiors that due to lack of funding, all existing experiments had to be stopped. He was frustrated by the end of his career, so he asked his brother and sister out for a break. Just when he decided to give up on his dream, which he had been pursuing for years, his brother and sister advised him to think about his father's motto when he encountered difficulties. Little did these three children know, the lemon theory that their father told them to remember was given to the family by a strange man named Jack. Before he died, he passed it on to the family. This motto not only sustained their father through a difficult night, but it also sustained Max through his many struggles. He eventually achieved great results in the field of Alzheimer's drug development. And these results benefited people with Alzheimer's disease, greatly helping them prolong their lives. And that includes Jack's wife, Rebecca. That's the power of a spiritual legacy. Now, let's go back to the night Jack's children were born, when the old doctor told him that only two of the triplets would survive. Jack never would have imagined that the next words of comfort from the old doctor would have such a profound impact.